Well, you know, so, sometimes people need alternative types of financing, depending on their real estate needs, what type of property they want to buy. And, uh, and now more than ever, people need flexible options. And that's why working with a company like North Point Bank, uh, you do you, you have uh, different portfolio financing programs that that only you offer, meaning portfolio, right? That only North Point Bank offers. It's something unique to you. Can we jump into that today and talk about some of the different types of financing? One of the most popular programs out there. And, and again, keep in mind, there are two types of portfolio loans. There's owner occupied and there's investors. So depending on what you know category you fall into, what we'll start with owner occupied is, you know, for first time, you know, the first time home buyers or repeat home buyers. These programs, you know, a couple in particular, one that I love to use for self-employed borrowers, and we might have touched on this in the past, it's called a bank statement program. We take either a 12 or 24 month average of your deposits. You look at your bank statements for the last 12 or 24 months and figure, okay, you deposit X and Y dollars per month. We can see the average. We'll actually use that essentially to determine your income. So we're not looking at, you know, W-2s, we're not looking at pay stubs, not tax returns. But in general, it's a way for someone to generate income and qualify for a mortgage without worrying about having, uh, you know, maybe the income on, on a conditional W-2 or showing the profit on a tax return. So this mm -hmm. is one of the more popular ones for self-employed borrowers. Mm -hmm. Credit score requirements are a little bit higher. We also mm -hmm. typically want to see you be employed minimum of two years, ideally, you know, four to five years. It depends on the industry. So we keep that in mind when we make this decision. It's not cut and dry for all professions, how much, what percent we use. Asset depletion. This is a program for owner-occupied, more for people who are either, you know, either semi-retired, thinking about retirement, you know, maybe a, a repeat um, home buyer where you have money in the bank. Let's say, for example, you're working part-time, you're someone semi-retired and you want to buy a home or second home even. We'll look at what you have in your assets, and we have a certain way of calculating it. We divide it over usually 10 years, 120 months. So if you have a, a large amount of money in your 401k, yeah. we'll actually take that and divide it by 10 years, 120 months, and that'll come, come to a number for your, your monthly income. So it's a way for people that have money in the bank that don't want to spend it all right away to buy a property cash, but can show they have the ability to pay their mortgage for a long period of time using those funds. And we'll allow you to use that. It's called asset depletion. Another program that I like to talk about a little bit is um, for investors. And this is probably one of my bread and butter. I, I do these at least one a month, if not more. Um, okay. It's called the uh, investor cash flow. Now, this is for investors, one to four unit properties. And essentially what we do is we use rental income only to qualify the borrower, rental income and credit score. Let's just say, for example, you, you found a three unit property east side of Providence. So let's just say, you know, fair market rent, whatever it may be, we take it, let's just make it easy, 2,000 per floor. Three unit property, 2,000 per unit, that's $6,000 a month that property generates. As long as your new mortgage, principal interest, taxes and insurance is less than or equal to that amount, you're qualified. It does require 20% down, but again, most investor programs require 25% down or more. So we use this program for people that, you know, want to buy numerous properties and we'll allow you to do it many times, up to $3 million portfolio. So one more thing, you know, Emilio, we have another program, you know, for um, non warrantable condos. Now, I'm not sure if you've dealt with this before. I imagine you have. We have, um, yeah. Especially, you yeah. know, this market, condominiums are difficult, but non warrantable is almost impossible. So we have a program at North Point with 20% down for non warrantable condos. And we can write those, you know, any all throughout the country. And again, it's it's twenty percent down. And you know, we have to look at the, still the financials in the, in the questionnaire. But even if it's non warrantable, we determine that we'll still do the financing as long as it makes sense. And, and most of the times, it does. Do you have anything for uh, new construction? Yes, yes, we do, Emilio. We have, we have actually two types of programs: new construction. One is. If you have a package where you have the land and construction in one, let's just say you have a builder that in a development looking to do a whole land and build, we can do yeah. new construction 5% down, which is very unique. Most lenders out there require 10 to 20% down. It's a conventional program that we have, conventional guidelines with construction. So that, that's the most popular one. Yeah. Obviously, we can also do something where you purchase land first. Um, the land requires more money down, depending on the situation, anywhere from 20 to 35% down for land. But keep in mind, if you do buy the land first, when you want to build down the road, any equity you have in the land can serve as your down payment for when you actually build. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. You do 5% down, then sell your current home, take the money you made, pay down the loan before it 
right at the time it closes, and now you never paid PMI, and you only put down 5% up front. It's almost a bridge loan, but yet you're gonna stay in your home throughout and not worry about renting when your house is being built. So it's something that might make sense.